Good morning, everyone. <laughs> so, um, our beloved Sam Krieger, music director, had a, an emergency he had to deal with this morning. And so we are so blessed to have the incomparable, wonderful, magnificent Susan Edwards Martin as our soloist. <laughs> And Karen Smith, who's going to be accompanying her. And our amazing technical team who helped us switch around all the songs and lyrics and everything. <laughs> so in support of Sam, we're just going to come together and make this all work. So uh, let's begin with our opening chant, The Light of God Surrounds Us. And if you would all please rise. <laughs> Susan, <laughs> please be seated. And welcome to all of you who are joining us as well via Facebook Live and Zoom. We're so grateful that you're with us either here in person or virtually. Grateful we can still get together. 
So let's take this moment right now to join together and feel that interconnectedness in which we all live. As we close our eyes and turn our attention inward, just allowing ourselves to sense beyond our physical senses, beyond that sense of you, me, him, her, this and there, here and there. It's all one life, one power, one presence. It's the life of God living through, around, and as each and every one of us gathered here this morning, in person or virtually. We are all part of that one life of God. And we come together to remember the truth of that divine essence at the center of our being, to have a greater experience of God's nature in our lives. And I know that God being in every place, in every moment, God is ever so present throughout this service that we feel it's love that brings us together. We feel it's love flowing through all those who are of service. We feel it's love and inspiration touching us as it flows through our beloved Susan Edwards Martin and Karen Smith this morning. <laughs> and I know we hear the perfect, perfect word of God through Dr. Mark. But Dr. Mark's message awakens us to that vibration of God at the center of our being so we can experience and express it more fully as we go forward into our lives after this service. And so I'm giving thanks right here, right now, in this moment, for all the blessings I know that we receive during this service. And in gratitude, I release this word knowing it is absolutely so. I let it be, and so it is, and together we say, Amen. You are the face of God. I hold you in my heart. You are a part of me. You are the face of God. You are the face of God. I hold you in my heart. You are a part of the face of God. You are the face of God. I hold you in my heart. You are a part of me. You are the face of God. And so please rise and join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And so please join us in our congregational song. It's in every one of us. It's in every one of us to be wise. Find your heart, open up both your eyes. We can all know everything without ever knowing why. It's in every one of us by and by. It's in every one of us to be free. Find your heart, 
Open your eyes and see We can all love everything Without ever knowing how It's in every one of us Here and now Please be seated. Okay, so this is the time in our service where we give ourselves the gift of five minutes of just communing with that divine essence at the center of our being and giving Susan a chance to catch her breath. <laughs> I'm good, I'm good. You're good. Yes, you're not good, you're awesome. <laughs> and so I invite you right now to just get still to close your eyes and for the next five minutes just silently repeat the mantra God is the love that I am God is the love that I am just silently repeat that over and over and I'll bring us out of meditation in five minutes
You are blessed beyond belief. I am loving you in me. If you are still, you will find I am your thoughts that come to mind. You are the ocean in a drop. I am the calm and stormy sea. I am the light within that empowers you. Let it shine for the world to see. You are fearless, you are free to be all you were meant to be. I am the seeds of your deepest desires. I am the infinite mind that inspires. If you should ask why this is so, I am part of everything you know. I am the eyes of the beholder. I see you in me as we grow older. I am that which you can rely. I am the smiles on faces passing by. You are capable of doing boundless things. You are fearless to spread your wings. I am the stars in the night sky. I am the kindness that shines in your eyes. I am what's possible, your life force, to enlighten you, your loving source. You are blessed beyond belief. I am the love in you in me. When you are still, you will find I am part of you, blessed and divine. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, I had some notes here. <clears throat> All right, good morning. Nice to be with you. Uh, if you're here in person, if you're with us in Zoom, which is also in person, I'm just so happy to have you here. Um, you know, in the science of mind, we teach that God is a principle of life, that that principle that is life knows no opposite, right? So God doesn't know anything contrary to the principle of life. So I want to start with this uh, today because what I find is in life, you may reach a point where you start to realize, oh, you know, things are not as stationary as I had thought. Um, one of the things I think we start to realize as we, as we grow up is that, you know, people move, people leave, and sometimes people even leave this earthly plane. I know that it is my unhealthy attachment that's always causing the suffering. And by unhealthy, I mean that kind of thinking that says, I can only be happy with. I could not be happy without. I can only have love with. I could not have love in my life without. You know, every soul is so unique. Every soul has its own journey, you know, and I can't judge any of it. You know, I mean, really, as I look at another person's life, I can't judge anything about their journey. Their journey is totally between them and the God of their being. I don't know what another soul is here to accomplish. In fact, most of the time, I'm not so sure what I'm here to accomplish. I'm, I mean, honestly, I check in with it all the time. I ask all the time. Um, and I can only ask for myself. You know, I can't say, God, what is so-and-so here to do? It's not my business, right? But God, what am I here to do? What's my purpose? What will give my life more heart and meaning? So, I believe that each and every one of us, and this is what science of mind teaches us, is that we are perfect ideas in the mind of God. And as I am a perfect idea in the mind of God, that perfection, as I know that, that perfection is manifest in my body now. I do not think sick thoughts, right? I don't believe in sick. I don't expect to get sick. I don't revel in sickness, right? Because God is a principle of life. And so I stay on that side of the fence. Right? That God is the principle of life. Perfect health, I believe, is God's intention for every one of us. And we all have our own experience that we are working through. We go, you know, we, you and I, we go on living our life. And for a long time, almost everybody out there seems older than us, right? But then one day you get up, <laughs> one day you wake up and you go, wow. Almost everybody out there is younger than me. How did that happen? Hmm. 
So, so what I bring up is this idea that our time on Earth in this particular vessel is finite. So how do we decide to respond? This, I think, is very important in the rest of our lives. You know, when we get to that point where we say, hmm, I've played probably more than half the game. That means that less than half the game is before me, right? I know this is a difficult realization, and I don't say this to be a buzzkill. Really, I don't. I say this because I want us to really look at this under a microscope so that we will make better choices and have better thinking so we naturally have a better experience out here in the world. So how we decide to respond to this notion of, hmm, OK, there's more behind me than there is ahead of me, I think is very important for how we live the rest of our lives. I did a memorial service yesterday for a member of our church, Taryn McEwen. It always makes me stop and look and evaluate, um, especially when it's somebody who f is, is, is a peer, that we're similar in age, you know? It just, it just makes you pause, right? Now, we don't know when we turn the page that it may be the end of the book, right? So the idea that I come away with every time is I need to be really present now. I need to be the best version of myself now. I need to be loving now. I need to be conscious now. I need to be awake now. I need to be the living demonstration of this teaching right now because I cannot keep pretending like I have a lot more innings in the game. You know, I mean, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful, but you know, we don't know. And so I think it's natural when we lose people, particularly the ones who are close in, that we seek, you know, the, uh, for me, it's where I turn to is spiritual truth, right? So I've had a loss, and what I have to go to is I have to go to the truth, because I know the scripture says, if I know the truth, the truth will set me free. And so I keep looking to the Science of Mind textbook, and I look to the Bible, and I find the truth that lifts me up. See. I suppose all of us ask again and again, geez, am I, am I doing this right? I think culturally we place an enormous amount of emphasis on the idea of longevity. That a really good life culturally is a really long life. But between you and I, we know people who've lived a really long life and it hasn't been a great time. And we say to ourselves, God, why does somebody so miserable live so long? And then we go, well, because they're too mean to die. That's why. Right? So that doesn't, that doesn't really fit, right? That doesn't really fit with, with our kind of thinking. But longevity over quality, I think, is a mistake. That we want to experience the greatest quality of life and living and loving that we have, that we can possibly have for as long as we are here. See, we're all taught that this long, 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 long life wins. But quality of life doesn't magically improve with the length of life, have you noticed? Not without us using the dominion that God has given us to help move that forward. Um, in that, you know, if it were true that living longer gave you better quality, what that would mean is that all the older people we know would have extraordinarily fabulous lives, right? That everything would just be just beyond the beyond. OK, so this man goes to see a doctor <laughs> after a huge battery of tests. And the doctor says to him, I'm really sorry to tell you, I have bad news. You have an incurable disease. Um, and what you need to do immediately immediately, starting right after this appointment, is you need to give up smoking and drinking and red meat and fried foods and sugar and, uh, and sex. Give up all of those things. And the man looked at the doctor and said, wow, well, that's, that's really a lot. Will all of that let me live longer? And the doctor says, no, but it's sure going to feel a lot longer. Now is the time to get this stuff straightened out in our head. I'm telling you, we all want to wake up one day, you know, and, you know, and, and realize, you know, I have sucked all the juice out of life that there is. I have embraced it all. I have feasted on it. I have lived every experience. I have not phoned in any of this lifetime. See, because a long life is no longer the thing. 
unless that long life is filled with qualities of love and peace and creative expression and joy, all of those things that make it really, really worthwhile. See, life is not something to be endured for a long time. And I think that has predominantly been the consciousness um, on the face of the earth. Uh, uh, maybe until recent decades, that life was just something to be endured for a long time because people believe that when they die, they got their rewards, that everything got better. But in the science of mind, we don't believe that there's a land of milk and honey that you go to when you die. We believe that heaven is available right here, right now. Ernest Holmes says in his Declaration of Principles, what he called, what I believe, he said, we believe in the emancipation from all discord. I think about that a lot, and I think that's a really big statement, that everything could go well for everybody? Yeah. That everybody could be free from dis-ease, that everybody could have their needs met, that everybody could have love? Absolutely. And you know, say that, I think, well, that sounds good. Sign me up for that. I'm on board, right? Because now is the time to get this all figured out. To simply live a really long time and endure a lot I don't think is the purpose of why our souls incarnate here, right? I believe we're supposed to enjoy our life every day. And this does not mean that difficult things don't happen because, you know, in the course of a lifetime, there will be lots of experiences, lots of varied experiences. But the thing is, when we leave this earth, I believe that what we want to do is leave behind a legacy of love and happiness and abundance and joy, all good things, not a history of struggle and decline or lots of blame and shame and regret. You know, like, oh, wow, isn't that lovely? You know, I, I, I see that on my tombstone. Mark, he blamed, he was filled with shame, and boy, did he regret. You know, that is not the way I want to go out. No, absolutely not. You know, I want them to say, like, he was having a great time till the last minute and then finally left because he had something better to do. That, to me, is like, okay. See, living well is not self-indulgent. It is not. It's not. Joy is not found in selfishness. Joy is what God's love feels like. You know, so whenever in our life we're feeling joy, we have to know this is the love of God. The love of God is truly present in my life. Life, our life, I believe, is about quality, right? It really is. Happiness and longevity cannot be pursued for their own sake. They're both the effects of quality living, quality thinking, quality acting. In other words, their happiness and longevity are the effects of a consciousness of happiness and longevity, you know? So I want us to look at our life through a lens that says, as long as I am here, I'm going to be happy, I'm going to be healthy, my life will have purpose and meaning as long as I am here. Rather than looking at like, oh, well, I turned a corner and it's all downhill from me. That is, no good can come from that. We realize no good can come from that. In religious science, you are not here for longevity. You know, a long life won't necessarily create anything. Only consciousness creates. That's what we teach. Not the calendar, not years go, well, we'll see what happens years down the road from now. Nothing. Nothing will happen years down the road from now that's different than what's happening now unless we do something in consciousness. Years will pass whether you're sick or well. Why not be well? Years will pass whether you're prosperous or broke. Why not be prosperous? Why not? Right? Quality thought creates a quality life. This is the science of mind teaching. That's what we want. We want a quality life. And by quality, I mean principled thought, principled words of truth. Ernest Holmes said this. He said, the law of life is a law of growth. That means the forward movement of mind. Mind that we are is always moving forward, expanding in ideas, in goals, in plans, in answers, dreams, all of that. Now, God, we teach, is infinite. And, and, and the not just God is infinite, but God is the good to which there is no opposite, right? Here on earth, we have opposites, light and dark, good and bad. But if we keep raising up, there is a level where God is all good and that good has no opposite. Ernest Holmes said, we should endeavor to stop limiting God. And the way we do that is that we look at the past and we hold it up to the present and predict that that's going to be our future. That's one of the ways we do that. Or we look to our past and say, oh, well, it's probably going to be like that. In Science of Mind, we teach that all things are given to us. God has already made the gift. 
And I love that. But God gives in the abstract, and we receive in the concrete. Right? So God gives us an idea. Ideas are abstract. And we receive in our mind. So I believe we're supposed to live fully right now up until that last moment. I, really, we're supposed to live fully, fully, fully as long as we are here. Live happily, go quickly. That's my motto. You know? I mean, really, that's for me. That's the consciousness that I want to create. And I want you to know we are all creating some consciousness right now. Right? So happiness is not getting everything you want. I, it really, I, it's the other way around. It's wanting everything you get and, and, and getting rid of any of the bad stuff that might slip in along the way. See, I, this idea of desire is very interesting to me because when a desire comes into our mind, I believe desire is what God wants to give to us. You know? And so we agree when, when we honor that desire, we receive when we do something about it. Right? We're, we're immersed in an ocean of creative consciousness the science of mind teaches us. God does not require us to sacrifice for things to get better. We give our best attention to life, and life gives its best attention back to us. So when I give up a limited notion of what life is and how it works, well, you know, not only does my life count, everyone's life, absolutely everyone's life counts. So what you do with it adds to the quality of life, not only for you, but for every person. And I believe that when we heal, whenever we heal anything within ourself, we're healing it not just for this lifetime, but we're healing it for all eternity. And when we really get free of something, like if you have something that's just sort of dogged you for a long time, maybe it's been a prejudice or a resentment or a jealousy, when we finally push through that, right, when we finally get past it, I believe not only are we healed for now, I believe that we're healed for all eternity. You know, that's why some of those things, I think, dog us for such a long time, because they're some of the bigger things that we came here to move through, right? So um, you are not to compete for your good. You know, there's no competition in the mind of God. You don't have to compete with your neighbor. What's yours, God has already ordained for you by right of consciousness, right? Emma Curtis Hopkins says, there is good for me, and I ought to have it. And I, I agree completely. If God has created good, and that good has your name on it, then it really can't possibly belong to anybody else. Um, it's yours, like we say, by right of consciousness. You know, people so often come to the science of mind to improve a particular condition in their life. That was certainly very attractive to me early on because Ernest Holmes was brilliant in giving us tools that would improve the quality of our experience on Earth. But we have to understand that the power, the presence, the principle that we work with is actually limitless. And those who understand this really seem to get more out of the teaching. So I would ask us to turn our attention inward together now for a moment. Let's all close our eyes and bring our awareness to the pattern of our breathing for a moment and just become still, knowing that each and every one of us, we live in a universe that is absolutely perfect in every way. The universe itself is a perfect universe. And each and every one of us, I know that we are perfect beings, perfect ideas, perfect emanations in the mind of God. So I claim for each and every one of us, our body has its own intelligence of perfection within it. And we allow this perfection to move through us fully and freely and unencumbered right now. And if there's any place in your life, in your body temple, that particularly needs attention, that could particularly benefit from the light of God's love shining there, see that in your mind's eye right now. And silently know with me that I do not pollute my body with false ideas about disease and false ideas about health. I greet my life understanding that I am born to live in perfect ease, perfect health, and my body is equipped from beginning to end with the ability to do all of that. I turn away from the belief that dis-ease is a necessary part of life. It's not. Or that it's necessary to my being. It's not. That there is no lesson to be learned from sickness. There's no value to be gained from those appearances of negativity. 
there's no debt to be paid with it. I know for each and every one of us that we are a perfect idea in the infinite mind. And that idea is manifest in every cell of our body temple right now. I don't think sick. I don't believe sick. I don't accept sick. I do not revel in sick. Perfect health is God's intention for each and every one of us. And so for all of us, I claim today healing of anything that stands between us and total well-being in our lives. Today I claim that the healing power, the healing presence, the healing light, and the healing love of this universal mind is working through each and every one of us right now. It is our divine right. Today I claim healing in all of our affairs, our relations, our relationships. I claim healing in our consciousness, but also in our subconscious mind. I claim healing of our total being. I know for each and every one of us, we embrace life each and every moment fully with love, with joy, with enthusiasm, with aliveness. I claim we are healed of our past. I claim our future is healed. And I know for all of our loved ones, we see them in our mind's eye, parents and children, friends and neighbors, and we know that God's healing light surrounds and fills each and every one of them. We let our prayer be a blessing for the world that we live in. So emanating out from our sanctuary is a consciousness of love and wholeness and abundance and peace. And we let that extend to all people everywhere, everywhere on the face of the earth. No one left out. We bless our church and all churches, synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God. And I know we are blessed by the awareness that living our life fully in each moment is absolutely God's intention for each and every one of us. I know all is well in our mind, our body, our spirit, our life. And for all of this, we give heartfelt thanks. We release this word into God's perfect law, and so it is. Together we all say, Amen. All right, we'll sing one time together. I am so, so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all that I have. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful. I am so blessed. All right, I invite you to hold your gift over your heart and we'll say our statement of giving together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you very much. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all that I have. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful. I am so blessed. Okay. <laughs> you got to get up every morning with a smile on your face and show the world all the love in your heart. Then people gonna treat you better. You're gonna find, yes you will, that you're beautiful as you feel. Waiting at the station with a workday wind blowing, I've got nothing to do but watch the passers-by. Mirrored in their faces I see frustration growing and they don't see it showing. Why do I? You got to get up every morning 
with a smile on your face and show the world all the love in your heart. Then people gonna treat you better. You're gonna find, yes, you will, that you're beautiful as you feel. I have often asked myself the reason for the sadness in a world where tears were just a lullaby. If there's any answer, maybe love can end the madness. Maybe not. Oh, but we can only try. You got to get up every morning with a smile on your face and show the world all the love in your heart. Then people gonna treat you better. You're gonna find, yes, you will, that you're beautiful. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. You're beautiful as you feel. You're beautiful. Thank you. All right. Susan Edwards Martin, you are beautiful, you are awesome, <laughs> you are, what else can we say, fabulous? <laughs> Thank beautiful. you so much, Susan. <laughs> You're so welcome. It's been my yeah. pleasure. Thank I you tell so you, much for having me. It started with a phone conversation about 8.45, <laughs> right, between yeah. me and Susan saying, guess what, you're doing everything this morning. <laughs> And thank you, Karen Smith, Yay. for beautiful. And you can get Susan's music on, I love this, unlimitedsusanedwardsmartin.com. And <laughs> yeah. also Spotify and Amazon. Okay. Yay. It's streaming. It's all streaming. Yes. And by the way, thank you for the first song. I know you wrote that just for us this morning. So uh, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> so. Well, let's see, a few announcements here. Donations, uh, for those of you who are watching us who are on uh, virtually, so there are a few ways that you can make your donations. One, you can call the church office right after service. Uh, we'll be here for about 30 minutes to take your donations over the phone via credit or debit card. That's 818-762-7566. Or you can go to our website, nhcrs.org forward slash give. And uh, from there, you can either make a one-time donation or set up recurring donations. You can also text the word GIVE to 818-457-3419. And just a quick reminder, uh, if you shop on Amazon, if you join Amazon Smile and uh, select North Hollywood Church as a designated recipient of donations, we will uh, get a little donation for every purchase that you make. It costs you nothing. So thank you for considering doing that. However you're supporting us, just know how grateful we are. Prayer with a Practitioner is uh, available uh, on Zoom after service. So if you're on Facebook Live, just go to our website and get onto the Zoom link, and we can put you in a one-on-one -on -one private breakout room with a practitioner for prayer. Those of you who are here, if you would like Prayer with a Practitioner, come forward, and you also have the option of writing your prayer request. We have a little prayer request forms, dropping them in the box, and let us know on the form that you would like a call from a practitioner, and we'll have someone call and pray with you. You can email prayer requests to us at prayer at nhcrs.org, or call the church office, and option four on our phone menu allows you to leave a voicemail message with your prayer request. And we're sure to check those every evening and send them out to our practitioners. Wednesday evening service. Uh, this is coming Wednesday, the 18th. Meditation begins at 6.50 p.m., service at 7. And we invite you to join us this week. Uh, we'll be having our very own practitioner, Mary Hyland, as our guest speaker. I'll be joining her. And Mary's topic is... What I learned on my COVID non-vacation. <laughs> <laughs>
Can't wait to hear that. <laughs> feeding the homeless. Our love and kindness ministry will be feeding the homeless today. If you'd like to know more about that and support this ministry, please go to our website, nhcrs.org. Living a Course in Miracles via Zoom, taught by our wonderful practitioner, Jeannie Laporte. They'll be meeting this Thursday, the 19th, from 7.15 to 9.15. All are welcome. Women, Food, and God Workshop with Reverend Nadine Weathersby. And by the way, uh, men are welcome too. Uh, don't let that title throw you off. Um, so that'll be this coming Saturday. August 21st from 10 a.m. to 12.30 p.m., and lunch is included. You can sign up on our website for this wonderful workshop. It's based on the book with the same name by Janine Roth, and cost for the workshop is $30, and the book is available on Amazon. Youth Church is now open. We're happy to welcome our youth ages 3 through 18 back to church for this 9.45 a.m. service. Uh, children, uh, parents with children that are under three, you're welcome to come and uh, we have the mommy, daddy, and me room at the back of the sanctuary where you can sit with them. Our Zoom virtual patio uh, continues before and after both our Sunday and Wednesday services as a way for those of you who join us virtually to stay connected as a congregation. Our men's group meets every Sunday from 11 to 11.30 uh, pardon me, uh, on Zoom, and all men are welcome. And our Zoom meditation every morning from 8 to 8.15 continues Monday through Saturday. For all this information and so much more, just go to our website, nhcrs.org, and you can also sign up for our uh, monthly newsletters and weekly e-blasts. With that, again, we thank you so much for joining us. Let's all stand as we join in the peace song led by Susan Edwards Martin. <laughs> <laughs> Let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be. With God as our Father, family all are we. Let us walk with each other in perfect harmony let peace begin with me let this be the moment now with every step i take let this be my solemn vow to take each moment live each moment in peace eternally repeat after me. I'm at home in the heart of God. I am at home in the heart of God. My life is anchored in truth. My life is anchored in truth. I can never be separate. I can never be separate. I live in the consciousness of peace. I live in the consciousness of peace. I release all fear. I release all fear. I am living love. I am living love. Amen. Amen. Thank Woo! you so much.